I'm uh, Lewis Ludlow and I play for Gloucester Rugby. Uh, the first question is, how quick is Lewis Reese Zamet? Um, Zam is very fast. Uh, his first game he actually played for us, I was screaming for him to kick the ball out. Um, he ends up running the length of the pitch and scoring a try. <laughs> so that's, it's one of those moments where it's just like, fair enough, that, that kid's, kid's quick. Um, and he's forever had the name Speedy since. So yeah, it shows how, how quick he is. Who trims everyone's heads during the milk challenge at Gloucester? Um, this is a ritual been done for many years now. And it's, it's Charlie Sharples has the oldest, bluntest set of clippers you could ever imagine. And he stands in the middle of the circle like a kid at Christmas on Milk Challenge Day, waiting to, it's not even cut people's hair, it's cut people's heads. He, he just goes diving at people with these clippers. Uh, young lad, George Barton this year, who had it done, um, honestly thought we were calling the doctor in for stitches. His poor, pale little head got cut so bad. Fair play to him, he just wore it. Um, but yeah, Ch Chaz is the one and he, he takes it as a, a big part of his, his job at Gloucester, to be fair. Would you rather have Haskell's chat or Tyndall's nose? That's, that's an in interesting question. Um, probably, I don't know, it's quite tough. I suppose Haskell's chat may get you into some trouble, um, but it's probably got him into some very lucrative places as well and probably got him out of some trouble a few times as well. So I think I'll go with Haskell's chat, to be fair. Uh, what steps should the Cherry and Whites be taking to move out of 12th in the Premiership? Get a win would be, be a good start. Um, no, I think I think we're taking some good steps. Um, you know, if, if you, a few results go our way, we're, we're building nicely and, and hopefully we'll be, be out of 12th pretty soon. Uh, go back in time or to the future? Probably take into account that last question. I wouldn't mind going to the future. Uh, and, and seeing seeing where we end up uh, would be quite nice to be fair and hopefully it's not 12th um, what's your best grassroots memory uh, my best grassroots memory would be probably getting to have my dad as my coach um, for a lot of it um, every summer we used to go on tour uh, we had a really good one to Ireland um, when we were about 15 you know you would, would be best mates at school going away for the weekend, um, really, really good, good time. Best coach, uh, I've, I've had a lot of, you know, I've been lucky, I had a lot of good coaches growing up. Like I say, my dad was was one. Um, a lot of different rugby coaches from, from all over the world. But the one that's probably had the biggest effect on me personally is uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, who's currently at Gloucester, Dan Tobin. He's probably had the biggest effect on my on my rugby career and and how I've changed, especially over the last few years since he's joined Gloucester. Um, so he's probably had the biggest impact. What is it like being captain? Um, it's good. I, I I love it. I really do like it. It's a it's a huge honour to start with, um, especially captain the club like Gloucester. Um, it comes with some stresses. You know, we, we've had our, our fair share of incidences this year. To be fair. Um, it's a bit different with COVID as well you know you're always trying to sort out stuff with players coaches what's going on who's off testing false negatives false positives are a massive thing um, which is probably a bit different but on the pitch I tend to think it's actually pretty similar to playing other than having to chat to the ref every now and again hopefully you're not chatting to him too much um, but it's not not too dissimilar really What's it like having your first Gloucester match? Uh, the first match I had for Gloucester running out in front of the shed was, was, was huge. It's, you actually don't understand the noise it can make. You, know, you think of Gloucester Stadium as quite a small rugby stadium, um, but the noise that it can generate, especially in one of those Friday night games. Um, and the one thing is you, you never, ever get bored of it. It is, it is great running out of that in front of that shed, something we miss massively at the moment. Um, the hundredth one was a big one as well. That that was massive for me. That was one I'll, I remember for a long, long time. The noise when you, you get to run out on your own, that, that was great. Uh, best advice to a player in the Gloucester DPP going forward as you went through this yourself? Uh, I would just say I wouldn't 
the biggest thing I say to you, the young players that ask me this question quite a lot, especially around Gloucester, is not, not to worry too much. Um, I was never actually in the academy properly until I was 17. So, you know, I tend to found that at the younger ages, they were sort of picked on size and stuff, and that wasn't something I, I had at all. Um, keep working on your basic skills and, and your fitness. And at the end of the day, I think it's, it's an old cliche, but hard work does does beat talent in the end. It, it really does. Um, and there's, there's a few living proofs of that at Gloucester and has been at Gloucester through the years. How are you managing to balance professional rugby games and training, as well as being a fairly new dad? You must be knackered. Um, I'm actually really lucky. Um, my missus is great to start with, with our little one. Um, being a nursery nurse herself, it was like a you know duck to water how well she's done. Um, and the fact that our little one spent the first week in a, a neonatal care, she got put into a really, really good routine. So four hours sleeping, feeding every four hours. It was it was perfect. We haven't really had any of the you know the, the struggles, so to say. We've, we've been really lucky with her. Um, so it's not been not been too bad for me really. How does training work with bubbles and that? I, I presume that's to do with COVID. Um, we go into training as normal. Um, we have to be very very careful along the lines of. We wear a mask the whole time. As soon as you enter the training ground, you wear a mask. You don't take that off until you leave. Everything's more spaced out. Everything's cleaned. If we're in the gym, you have to clean everything up. Then as soon as you finish the gym, cleaners come in, completely de-clean everything for the backs to go in. Everything has to be in small groups. We're now tested three times a week um, at Gloucester. We do two, two PCR tests and then a lateral flow test as well. So you're constantly being monitored. And then it's up to yourself to, to take that, you know, take that upon yourself when you're away from the club to make sure you're not mixing with anyone too much. And, you know, at the end of the day, you bring it into the club, you've seen what, seen what happens, two, three, four games can be missed. And although you're getting points, um, you're not playing, which which I don't know, what, I don't know what's worse at the minute, not playing or not getting points. Um, league position aside, how far have the squad come in terms of belief and confidence? Um, this is a question I've been asked a lot over the, the last few weeks, obviously, with what's been going on and the, the few different situations we've had at Gloucester this year. Um, and the squad hasn't felt better in, in my time at Gloucester, if I'm honest. Um, I think it's the most talented squad we've ever had. And the fact that the, the young coaching setup we've got, the belief in the, in the games, even you know, right up until the, the Newcastle game, which is the last game we played, the, the belief the boys have on the pitch is... It's unbelievable. It feels great. We feel great. We know the right systems are in place. There's, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of change happening. It, it just needs to click once or twice. And I can assure the, the Gloucester fans, especially, that we will be moving up that, that league table pretty soon. How have the club tried to support the players during COVID? Um, so when it first started um, and the lockdown went in, Everyone got to go to the club and got to pick up as much, you know, gym equipment, training equipment as you could, basically. Um, and then there was plans every day. There was you know, Zoom calls for training sessions, Zoom calls for stretching stuff. Um, I was actually really lucky. I needed a shoulder up for about six months. Um, and then when the doctor rung me and said, look, I could do you on the Saturday. Um, I'm, I've heard lockdowns coming in on Monday. I was really dubious about it. Just like, no, I don't want to miss any games. I can, I can make it to the end of the season, sort of thing. Um, luckily, the the doctor said, look, you either do this or it doesn't get done. Um, so I was told by the doctors to go and have it done. No choice. Um, and then yeah, we got put into lockdown on the Monday. So I was very strangely having to do rehab with the physio. Um, he was outside my conservatory. I was inside my conservatory, and that was the only way we could talk or or show each other how, like, show me what to do and that type of thing. Um, I got got really lucky with a company called WKG Sports, who sorted me out with gym equipment um, that I, I needed really to, to do my shoulder rehab. Um, and I was really grateful for those guys sorting me out. Um, so COVID for me was actually a, a really positive lockdown in terms of getting my shoulder rehabbed and back. I managed to have a, a full shoulder up and not miss any games, which was which was great. 
how often do people confuse you with Lewis Ludlam? Um, I think he's already answered this on on, on this pod, podcast. Uh, it, it does happen quite a lot, to be fair. Um, as I said to him before, I've you know I've had congratulations for being in World Cup squads, and I think he's done better out of it than, than the two of us. So I, I get confused with him, and obviously he's he's cracked on and done really well, which is which is good to see. Um, but yeah, it, it does happen quite a lot, like man of the matches for Coventry stuff like that, which is, is always odd on Twitter, um, or, or being. Watching a game and thinking he's playing well, and then getting a tweet saying "well played" that later on that day when you haven't done anything is it's always funny. Um, but yeah, it's it's always interesting when the professionals get it wrong as well, rather than just uh, fans. Um, toughest back row you faced? I was lucky enough to play um, for Gloucester against the Barbarians um, a few years back, and they had a really really good side, um, which included. Ali Surveyor um, in the back row. Although that game was probably a bit of fun for him, it, well, it looked like he was having fun anyway, running around us. Um, it was it was it was like a, almost like an honour to play against someone like that and see, even since then, how well he like he's done. He's in my eyes one of the best back rowers in the world. Um, but in in the Premiership, one of the toughest was um, Matt Luamanu, the old Harlequins number eight. Probably had one of my worst games ever against him. Just kept running into me, couldn't tackle him for love nor money. Um, and I'll never forget it. As Whenever people ask who's the hardest player you had to tackle, it's, it's always him uh, for me. If you didn't play rugby, what sport would you want to play? Um, quite tough, really. I've, I've only ever really played rugby. I played football a bit when I was younger. Um, I suppose a sport I love to watch is, is boxing. Um, wouldn't mind doing that. They get paid a decent wedge as well. I suppose it wouldn't be wouldn't be too bad um, doing that. Um, best moments so far with Gloucester. There's been a couple to be fair. Um, two that stick out would be the first time I captained the club um, against Saracens in an LB Cup game. We were 25, I think 25 three down at half time, and. Trevor Woodman was the sort of coach for that week, um, as they do, you know, they put the other coaches in and he sort of came in at half time, didn't really say much other than, look, go out there, lads, and you've got nothing to lose now. And we ended up winning the game. It was really strange. Group of young lads, sim similar thing, really. Group of mates, group of young lads went out there with sort of no care in the world. We ended up winning. That was that was really good. And probably one more recently was, was beating La Rochelle away in the semi-final. Um, to get through to the European final, which nobody said we could do. We'd already been out there twice in the season and lost. Um, that that was, in terms of a feeling on a pitch, that's probably the best one I've had at, at the end of that game. That was that was great. And then ritual before kickoff: take the head, trim the beard. I have a pair of pants, well boxers, which I've worn um, ever since I was at Hartbury College, eighteen. They are. There are a few holes in them, to say the least. They're a bit of a talking point in the changing room when I do get them out and put them on. Um, but I, I physically can't play without them. I think I'd have to not go out if I didn't have them. I've lost them a couple of times and Sean, our kit man's found them for me, which has been very stressful times. Um, but other than that and putting my tape on before I go, that's, that's probably it really.